The following podcast is brought to you by the Jonas Podcasting Network, found exclusively at wrestlingwithjonas.com. everybody thank you and welcome for another episode episode number two of ring around the jabroni um we got a great cast lined up here for you um partially representing buckle bomb entertainment and effing wrestling the jfb james from boston oh I yeah <laughs> all right and of course a regular fixture here on buckle bombs podcast uh, joining us from AEW, are you elite? The all elite bearded genius. We have Gary. Gary, how are you tonight? Fantastic. Uh, cold, but fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a couple of cold days here up in the Northeast. Yeah, it's uh, getting so cold here tonight. I guess there was a two hour delay for the local schools. So that's how cold it's going to get. All right. And. Joining us as the third contestant here on Ring Around the Jabroni, uh, representing FN Wrestling, we have Dallas. How are you doing tonight? Hello. I am great. I'm cold also. I hope that we close school tomorrow because I don't want to go to work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, we're looking at single digits up here in New York. I don't know about you guys, but... Mm -hmm. All right, so for those of you that are new here at the show... I'm going to ask a series of questions. These guys will debate, giving their best answers, trying to earn points. At the end of six questions, round one, I will take the top two scores, who will then battle it out for our championship with one final question. You guys ready? Absolutely. First question, and James will let you go first. Sweet. This year's Royal Rumble features WWE superstars, returning legends, celebrities, and even a rival company champion, Impact champion Mickey James. Honestly, who belongs in the WWE Royal Rumble and who doesn't? I'll tell you what. When, when we're talking about the women, Kelly Kelly and, and Michelle McCool, and I think they belong. I think they absolutely 100% deserve to be there. Uh, Mickey James deserves to be there. But... Hmm. You know, you can't you can't let in some of the women from like NXT. I don't think you know with the exception of Andy Rose. I don't think a lot of them are really ready uh, to make that jump and, and and grab that spotlight. Maybe Raquel Gonzalez, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, let's let's get Stardom in there. Let's get AEW in there. Bring you know, open up that door, Vince. Let the let the women run wild. All right, yeah, yeah, good point. And you have earned yourself a point. Yeah. Gary, what about you? How do you feel about this subject? I really like the first question. I really do. Um, you know, there's a couple of legends I guess I could agree with. You know, maybe, yeah, Kelly Kelly, sure. Why not, you know? Um, Mickey James, that one was a big surprise, as we all know. Um, and I'm gonna dive into that in two seconds. Uh, but you know, I, I kind of disagree with JFB. I think it'd be cool to get some NXT women on there. Um, you know, I, I get it, you know, they're the fastest rising talents going forward with this new NXT 2.0 or whatever, but you know. Io Shirai would be great. Just thinking about that now, like I think that would be a phenomenal addition to the Rumble. Um, I see Asa definitely returning. I see Bailey returning. I see even uh, Lacey Evans return. So this could be a proportion of returns, I think. Um, and I'm actually making a solid addition at this moment, and I really think one of the returns will actually win the Rumble. Um, so that's what I would love to see. As for the Mickey James thing, again, I'm going to disagree with JFB. I don't even see nothing with AEW talent coming on yeah. to both Rumbles. I just want to get that out there. No disrespect, JFB. <laughs> I, I don't see it at all, man. I just, I get it. You know, Jericho had his one little moment of WWE programming. This is a Royal Rumble. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, just 
no, I wouldn't mm-hmm. want to see that. But that's a whole different opinion for another day. Very good, very good. Dallas, how do you feel? I more so agree with Gary <clears throat> because I do think that NXT women do deserve to be in it. And because they're a part of w- WWE. And the legends are all the same legends that we've already seen in Royal Rumbles back. Like Kelly Kelly. Mm-hmm. She doesn't do anything for me. Like, I mean, obviously she's beautiful, but <clears throat> I just don't see her as like star quality. And if they like had an actual surprise, I mean, Lita is awesome. I love Lita, but she's not much of a surprise. And like, I feel like Gail Kim would be an awesome surprise. Mm-hmm. But we probably will never see that. <laughs> no, no. It's going to be our um, first impact wrestler at a WWE pay per view while man. they're still on the contract and champion. Yeah. Mm. And I don't want any AEW affiliation in the Royal Rumble because I feel like they would get buried by Vince. And that's why I don't really like the impact in WWE. Oh, for, forbidden Door, whatever they're calling it. Because Impact or WWE is going to bury each other. Like, it's not going to be any good. Yeah, we shall see. And Bailey did post a picture today, I believe it was on her Instagram. Looks like she's pretty close to getting ready to return, so maybe she does make a surprise entry in the Royal Rumble. I would love it if Bailey won. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Charlotte and Bailey. Yeah. Points all around for everybody. <laughs> um, Gary, we'll let you start with this one. I uh, will stick with another WWE topic here. Roman Reigns broke character at a house show on Sunday. Thanks the crowd for coming out despite everything going on and staying safe. Should top heel characters break character, even if it is just a house show? Because there's plenty of cell phone footage of what happened. Gary? Of course you would make me go first with a Roman question. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> no, now I'm gonna I'm gonna be out of character now. Um, I do I, I I will praise Roman for that. You know, because he's really harsh at times going on for what, two years now with COVID. Um, I think at least give some more upbeat feel good moments for sure for your fan base so I think that's great for Roman to go out there and you know him kind of like putting everybody at ease um, but you know I, I guess that there's been moments where Roman's actually even, you know had a character I, I'm pretty sure you guys seen that leak from like something a couple of years ago so, like the crowd calling him Aquaman or something like that and just <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I do give yeah. him credit where it's due. Like, you know, he's he's really becoming a hard worker in the company, regardless of what I think with the guy. Um, so I, I think that's great. I, I really do. Yeah, that could be a point for that one. Dallas, how do you feel about heels breaking character? Um, I think that they have the right to do so. Like they put in the effort, they put in the work. They are on TV and they excel in their character and they're online and they excel in their character and everything, but they're only human and they deserve to have feelings and deserve to break character once in a while. Like even MJF broke character like yesterday, I think, or today. Um, There's kid like, Gave him the middle finger, but it was like middle two fingers. <laughs> and he was like, It's supposed to be one or something like that. <laughs> and he like broke character. And I thought it was hilarious. Like, I think heels are allowed to have like a humanity side to them. Okay. Fair point. Fair point. JFE, what you got? So being being on this earth for many more years than both of you guys, uh, <laughs> I am I am from the era of kayfabe. You know, I'm from the era where 
heels and faces, drove in different cars. They dressed in different locker rooms. But I will agree with the both of you. Uh, I, I remember uh, being at a house show uh, and watching Stone Cold Steve Austin start singing Elvis Presley during a dark match. And it was fantastic to see Stone Cold Steve Austin just riffing with the crowd. And, and it was here in Nashville, and it was really awesome. Um, I, You know what? Break character. Who cares? I mean, everybody plays nicey-nice on Twitter, and everybody plays nicey-nice on Facebook. Kayfabe is dead. It's it's done. It's buried. It's in the ground. It's got a tombstone. Let it rest. Let them break character. MJF, however, needs to stay in character every <laughs> single day because he is funnier as a heel in life than he is on TV. But yes, K keep Kayfabe dead. Yeah, you want to thank the crowd? Go right ahead and do it, baby. Yeah, never turn MJF baby face again. No, you guys are making Again. Big something. Um, MJF was actually at a nearby. Uh, actually, I've been telling Sarah about this Heroes Hideout in Albany, and I was supposed to go there yesterday, but icy conditions prevented that. But uh, a friend of mine, Thomas, who I meet frequently over there, I wanted to know how the experience was with MJF yesterday. He told me that he went to get an eight by ten signed from MJF, and MJF comes back and says, "What the fuck do you want?" <laughs> <laughs> there you go MJF is always going to be that way I, that's why he's going to succeed in this business for years to come yes and I hope he never <laughs> goes to WWE <laughs> Dally is not going to happen bro <laughs> it's never going to happen this contract expires in 2024 alright fantastic conversation Sarah James you earned two points on that question yeah. <laughs> All right, next question. We'll start with Dallas on this one. Impact will have at least one superstar appearing at a WWE show. They're they are attracting top free agents, appear to be growing. What should Impact do to keep the momentum going? Uh, I think they should continue. If they're wanting it to be a legit thing, they should keep on sending people to WWE and have WWE people show up on theirs, too. Mm -hmm. um, like, Charlie Haas, I saw, just came back to Impact. It would be cool to have, like, Salt Benjamin go over to Impact for a little bit. Yeah. I agree. James. Here we go. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Impact is probably the closest thing to WWE than WWE at this point. Now, everybody's going for that realistic tone, but those over-the-moon over storylines impact. And just like WWE, you know, they need to just keep going. But there's one thing that's missing, and that is eyes on the prize, eyes on the product. They don't have it. They're on AXS TV, which 95% of the people in the United States do not have. They don't have a great streaming. Uh, you know, you can go through Fight TV to get their pay-per-views, but they need a strong, strong, strong uh, streaming uh, platform, and, and they need it sooner than later. You know, WWE's got Peacock. AEW eventually is going to be on HBO Max. We know it's going to happen. You know, you you need a strong platform to get people to put your eyes on the prize. That's mm -hmm. what Impact needs to do. If they want talent, they got to showcase that talent. I agree, hundred percent. Gary, so I'm going to counter what Dallas was saying. I couldn't agree more. Um, I've been saying this since the speculation of Forbidden Door. Um, I. They need to really get somebody big in there, you know, like Kenny Omega did with AEW. You know, I don't care if it's Charlotte Flair going on Impact's program, you know, and confronting Mickey James or even Deanna Perrazzo, you know, that that would be totally badass. Um, and yeah, I do agree with JFP as well. Like, they need to get away from the SSTV because. Thankfully, my parents has that as a subscription, so I go all the way to their house just to watch it. But <laughs> I, 
other than that, it's a challenge to, you know, try to keep up on it because we really don't have that viewing pleasure. Um, if there was Spike TV around still, that would have been pretty cool, you know, try to ink a new deal with Spike TV. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, Impact is uh, so underrated. I-, I said this on Sean's show yesterday, the topics of choice. Like, it's just, like, they really don't get the credit they deserve. Like, they're really pulling out all the stops. One thing that I loved what Impact did as well, there was nothing leaked about this yesterday. Uh, not yesterday, but at the Hard to Kill pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. I did not see an invasion of ROH come at all. Mm-mm. And that's what's beautiful about Impact. They keep things so low-key, it's amazing. Um, the Charlie Haas thing, you know, I was supposed to have an interview with him on the 1st. And he said, due to uh, circumstances, I can't do the interview. So I was wondering why, and now I know why. So that's a yeah. cool thing. Um, so keep up the good work, Impact. I mean, they are literally sticking by their guns and their main impact. So, yeah, good good things here for Impact. Good point. Good points, Phil. All right, JFP, we move to you going first on this next one as well. Here we go. Marco Stunt posted on his socials that he is trying to get on the competition show, The Voice. <laughs> Should contracted wrestlers be allowed to try for other shows while still under contract? Hey, listen, if Cody Rhodes can do the big show or whatever they're calling that show, <laughs> then by God, yes. Marco Stunt, go on The Voice. Marco Stunt, go on America's Got Talent. Go do something because he's not on TV. He's not doing anything. What a great way to put eyes on the prize. Chris Jericho was on Dancing with the Stars, and they actually saw viewership uptick with Jericho being on there on their product. I, mm-hmm. You know, Marco Stunt, get on the voice. If he can sing, and he's a pretty decent singer, then hell yeah, put him on there. What's the worst that can happen? You know, maybe he gets picked by uh, Ariana Grande, and he can, uh, <laughs> you know, get coached by her and, you know, come out sound like Sinatra. Damn, yeah. Do it. He has a really good voice. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, guys, I never knew he sang until I think it was Dallas said something in the group chat. Um, but it, it's pretty cool. I totally agree with JF as well. Like, there's always outside, you know, things to do when you're not in the ring. You know, definitely follow those dreams or follow your happiness. And uh, hey, I mean, I don't watch The Voice. Maybe this will give me a reason because I'm biased watching AEW frequently. So I've got to follow them as much as I can. <laughs> Even if it's yeah. Marco going to, uh, <laughs> you know, The Voice. Um, if you guys say he's really good, I'm curious to see it. And again, you know, as a wrestling fan, you like to see them follow their, you know, their hopes and dreams. And He's a pretty decent my- guitar player as well. Hey, if oh, Kenny yeah. King can be on The Bachelorette, then by God, Marco Stunt can be on The Voice. I'm starting a hashtag. I'm starting a trend on Twitter. I'm telling you. <laughs> Marco deserves better. Hashtag. <laughs> yes. Marco <laughs> The Voice. <laughs> Dallas, your thoughts? <clears throat> well, I feel like if it was elsewhere, it would be just like the Twitch situation where he wouldn't be allowed to do that. But in AEW, I feel like Tony would allow that because he's cool with all of his talent like that. And, um, yeah, Marco's not getting used right now, but I hear he might be, um, like, going more independent-wise. They might not renew his contract because I feel like I've seen him more often in GCW, like, results. I heard um, he heard rumors. I haven't been able to get confirmation that he may have uh, be a partial buyer into CCW. Yeah, I heard that too. But I haven't been able to find any confirmation, so I don't know if that's true or if it's still pending. We'll find out. But I think it'd be awesome to see an AEW talent on like a show like that because it would say like AEW superstar Marco mm-hmm. Stunt, yeah. and that'd be great like sponsorship. For AEW, and that all get people to tune in. What is AEW? Oh, wrestling. Okay, let's watch. <laughs> Hopefully, perfectly said, Dallas. Perfectly said. 
All right. So JFB is still in the lead after four questions, but five, Dallas and Gary tied a four. All right. Mm. Gary, you go first on this one here. Sammy Guevara won the interim TNT championship at Battle of the Belts with Cody most likely coming back in a few weeks. A, was this the right move? Or B, should they have stripped Cody of the belt or ma just made Sammy a number one contender instead of an interim championship? Good, good. Good question. Um, this one here, I'm going to say this. I don't think Sammy should have won because if it's in fact Cody's going to be in mine for the championship, I'm sorry, but man, Cody's going to win again. And it's going to be pushing, you know, Sammy on the back burner again. Um, I would love to see a unification title match, ladder match. Um, and the reason why I think they're going to do that is because now that they're on TBS, I don't think they're going to call it the DMD title. So I think they might just change up the name as well. My guess on that. Um, I really think, personally, the reason why I think Dustin should have won, not because of, you know, CME being on the back burner, perhaps, but, you know, Dustin getting one more championship before he retires would have been better to me. And get that, get that brother versus brother match one more time. And this time, it would be, mm -hmm. you know, twice as meaningful. Um, you know, because of the title being on the line. You know, maybe this could be finally Cody turning heel on his brother. It would be a great story for him to finally start his perhaps heel run. So that's what I would have done differently. But yeah, I, I... And then the second part of the question, stripping of uh, Cody of the title. I think uh, whether, they, whether or not they should have stripped Cody of the title or just made, you know, Sammy a more contender... Pretty much got it. You answered it. Yeah, and the thing that bothers me too is, excuse me, they're not they're not following by their rankings. Like all of a sudden, just like Cody, Sammy's the number one contender. Like, what's what's going on here? Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so, mage can't believe I'm actually saying a flaw about AEW, but it's it, it's true. You can't deny what you mm -hmm. see as a wrestling fan. So. Yeah. Dallas, your thoughts. <clears throat> well, I loved that match. That was a good match. And Dustin mm -hmm. Rhodes shows out every single time he's on AEW. And, of course, I love Sammy. But I don't feel like that match should have happened. I feel like they should have had like a, the AAA tag titles defended instead. And, um, because I don't really like the idea of, like, an interim championship. I mean, he just won a title a week or two ago. It's not been that long. He can take some time off without defending. He can take some time off without being on the show. Like, I don't see the purpose of there being an interim champion when he just won it. Agree. James? Let me tell you what I love. I love champion versus rightful champion. Razor Ramon, Shawn Michaels, Intercontinental Belt, ladder match, fantastic. Okada versus Will Ospreay for the uh, Cody Rhodes neck tattoo uh, IWGP World's Heavyweight title. <laughs> love it. You have the rightful champ versus the person who just happens to have the belt. They should have... Given it to Cody, they should have given it to Sammy and let Sammy proclaim, I'm not an interim champ. I am the champ. And then have Cody Rhodes come back in a couple months and say, hey, guess what? I'm the champ. And let them duke it out in a steel cage, blood and guts. Just let it go and let them run rampant on each other and, and put on a good show. I like the bro you know, I like the brother versus brother, but it's been done. The hearts did it and they did it a lot better. Uh, you know, I, I can understand Dustin Rhodes, but that guy's a teacher. He doesn't need a belt to, to prove what a great career he had. He had an amazing career. He's going to be an amazing teacher. But Sammy versus Cody puts butts in seats. That's that's my take. And a great take worthy of two points. Woo! 
Damn, he's mm. whooping us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last question. We'll let JFP set out on this one. Uh, Dallas, Gary, whichever one of you guys gives the better answer on this one moves on to the final round for the championship. Who wants to go first? Decide between decide amongst yourselves here. Without seeing the category, who's going to go first? That would be that man over there. Dallas, I, sorry. Yeah, you're oh, showing yeah. me like yeah. it's reversed. Fine, I don't know. <laughs> Fine, I'll start. <laughs> Hey, I'm pretty I sure no, think you can't lose points for pointing in the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dallas. Brock Lesnar is a comedy baby face. Are you buying it? Is it good TV? Absolutely. I think he's having the most fun in, in of all of his career, actually. And, like, it's really enjoyable. And it's, like, showing, like, a lot more character development i think in brock where he wasn't he's not like all serious and stuff like he used to always be now he's able to have fun and still be on top of the mountain like he's still breaking bitches and <laughs> all that like let the man have fun in his coveralls <laughs> <laughs> farm boy all right gary give me a reason to pick you as a winner here or otherwise it's dallas moving on to the finals just say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say this, though. The baby face rock to me is not only appealing to me, but extremely entertaining. And I do agree with Dallas. He's really having the time of his life right now. Uh, because, you know, we're so used to seeing a heel Brock Lesnar, you know. And when am I going to see something fresh with Brock? You know, because it's been nothing but annihilation, domination, Going away all the time. I've noticed something with Brock. It's an ongoing trend. He's he's been showing up. We never seen that with Brock. And just the laugh that the man gives me right now. And actually, he's the reason why I I actually watch the highlights to WWE because he's really intriguing me right now. And if Brock wasn't in this position, we wouldn't get Brock Lesnar versus Bob Lashley at the Rumble either. So I think that's good. I really love that uh, for that sense as well. So keep doing what you're doing, Brock. And I can't believe this for once in my life since Brock has ever been a WWE minus his rookie year back in 02. I, I want to see more of Brock like this. And I know he's not going to be perhaps Roman versus Brock for WrestleMania because I would go for Brock. But anyway... But, yeah, I'm really enjoying this very much. I mean, that day one, Paul Heyman impersonation was just out of nowhere. It was right out of the park. But I think I had to give this one to Gary just because just by a little bit, just by going a little more detail. Yeah, I know. Dallas, I'm sorry. I love it's great to have me on. Those two are good talkers. Yes. I had no chance. <laughs> well, because I forgot to bring it up earlier, Dallas, what do you got going on? Anything you want to promote to our audience that's watching? Um, I run an amazing prediction league called AFW, and we are bringing back the trios championship belts. All right. Uh, we will link. Or we'll, we'll put a link to that in our description for a YouTube video, and that goes up tomorrow. Check that out. Dallas, thanks for joining us. Hang on out backstage while you're here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Gary, what do you got going on? Anything coming up that you want to promote? Yes, I've been I've been dying to save. Uh, I've been dying to save this announcement. I'm very excited. Um, this wrestler got back to me last Thursday. I will be having an interview on March 12th with none other than MLW wrestler Davey Richards. Um, so I'm very excited for that one. Um, Charlie Haas also rescheduled February 13th, and it looks like I'm going to do a first ever episode of Triple Threat Main Event with me, Jeff Chadwick, and Charlie Haas. Um, that's if Jeff can um, come on. If not, I'm definitely going to take some requests for that. So, but Davey okay, Richards, yes. for what I'm interacting with him, such a nice guy. So. Very excited for that interview. Um, 
And then just a recap of Dynamite and Rampage this week. So you guys can find me on AEWR Elite. Just find that on Facebook and follow and like the page. Great. James, what do you got going on to promote? Man, I got so much to plug. It's going to take like an hour and a half. But I'll I'll digress. <laughs> I'll shorten it down to a few seconds. Uh, I am, of course, one half of the greatest tag team in podcast wrestling history. Uh, me, the Canada Drive, we have a podcast called Just Another Effing Podcast. We live stream on Sunday on YouTube. You can interact with us. If you don't want to live stream, you can catch us Monday mornings at 6 o'clock as we post it. We're in season two, and uh, we are having a blast doing it. And uh, I've been talking to uh, some old school wrestling uh, guys, and hopefully we'll have a couple on the show as guests. But, yeah. Right. Uh, I've been talking with David Crockett and and a couple other guys, and would love to get that old school feel and and bring them on and talk to them about the the glory days when kayfabe was real before <laughs> Iron Sheik and Hacksaw Jim Duggan with a bag of blow got pulled over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and we'll put a link to that as well in the comments for you too, so you guys can check that out. All right. Well, Daffy, you were the leader heading into the final question. Do you want to go f- answer the question first, or do you want Gary to answer first? I am I am going to pass. I'm going to take it second. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All Put right. Put me right on the friggin' uh, uh. <laughs> All right. Final question. Whoever answers better gets to uh, win episode number two here. AEW's debut hit one million views on TBS. How do they keep the momentum going? Okay, I'll try to have enthusiasm. Maybe that will spark up a point. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the well, sorry about that. Uh, so for the one million views for the video of TBS, I definitely think that was expected. You know, it's a debut on a great network. Um, I'm really hoping they can keep this momentum going for sure because you know we all seen AEW do some good weeks, some bad weeks um, yeah. when it comes to those ratings. Um, but you know, that's, that card was stacked. You know, you had a very great decisive winner out of Adam Page. You saw just a great, great, great show to say the least. Um, now for this momentum to keep going, this is why I really praise AEW so much is because they continuously just go with the flow. They don't rush things. Um, you know, so that's one thing that I really do like. Uh, you know, and for what I understand, too, their demo was pretty damn solid, too. I think it was like two two points mm-hmm. away from topping Monday Night Raw again. Um, I don't know about anybody else, but those demo numbers are very important as well. So I really think that's great. Um, I, I, I'm just I'm crossing my fingers things keep succeeding for AEW on this network because when you make a network really freaking happy, we're going to resign you because I don't know about you guys, but you know, Time Warner is a hell of a great network to be on. Mm-hmm. So cheers to uh, 2022 for a great start with AEW. So let's see what the numbers look like for this Wednesday. I'm really hoping some great numbers going forward to say the least. That's right. James. Here's what you do. You, you, you stay the course. You continuously tell great stories. You continuously showcase your top talent. You pepper it in with some of the guys from Dark and Elevation. And, and what you do is you put it in an oven and you bake it for 30 minutes at 350 and you get a decent show. And that's the key. You know, you, you, you have captured the hearts and minds of wrestling fans around the world by basically showcasing we're not what a WWE is. We're not what new Japan is. We're our own entity. We're our own little Island and, and telling great stories. I mean, they told the hangman page and the, and the Kenny Omega story for over a year, over a year of storytelling and it paid off Mm -hmm. greatly. And that's what you need to do. The the hangman versus Brian, you know, Brian Danielson, let it go. Keep keep doing it. Have Danielson needle him and needle him and needle him. 
and and get to that point where you tell that great story and get to that acme get to that the, the pinnacle and then just have the greatest match you've ever had on a pay-per-view um yeah, I love the fact that they're doing pay-per-view matches after pay-per-view matches on TBS and TNT. I think it's fantastic, and that's what mm-hmm. gets people excited. You know, I hated in the 80s. You never saw Hogan wrestle. You had to go to the pay-per-view. Uh, you know, WWE still does that. You don't get the payoff unless you watch the pay-per-view. AEW is giving it to you on a silver platter, already baked, already gooey and chewy and ready to consume. So keep doing what you're doing. Stay the course. All right. You know, both good arguments by both of you. Um, I think, however, James just presented more, I think, better examples. Um, But both both good answers, though. I think JFB takes this one just by a little bit, just by a smudge. Yeah. No, I I totally agree with the winner. Um, (laughs) JFB, that was perfect, man. (laughs) <laughs> um, because I, I can't say it enough with, with this company. It's just, you know, when you, when you're putting, what is it? Quantity over quality. It's just, yeah. it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. I just, you know, just let the good times roll for 2022 mm-hmm. for AEW and wrestling in general. What a great start to say. The least. Couldn't agree more. Well, thanks for joining us. I know Gary, I know, you know, I know we're gonna have you back on, James. You're more than come back on too, if you like, another time. You give me, you give me a time and a date. I'm there. <laughs> All right, we'll discuss off air. Everybody else watching, have a great rest of your evening.